So endometriosis is, is a condition when the cells inside the uterus, like the endometrial cells, they end up in other parts of the pelvis. And you know, this may happen the, the patient's developing as a fetus herself. It may be that there is a blockage somewhere where instead of the blood coming out of her during her period, it kind of backs up into the tubes and implants on the uterus or implants other parts of the pelvis. Some of, some of the most common um, symptoms are pain with period or chronic pelvic pain, sometimes pain with intercourse, pain around the time of ovulation. Sometimes the pain is really, really bad. They can't work, they can't go to school. Um, sometimes they have to take pain medication. And a lot of times this is, this is pain that has been around even since they were a teenager. And you know, sometimes what we'll see is patients, you know, let's say they're 20 years old, they go on birth control pills, and all of a sudden the pain goes away. And they live for 10 years on birth control pills and they're doing okay. And then they stop the birth control pills and all of a sudden their pain comes back as they're trying to get pregnant. Endometriosis patients also sometimes have seen multiple doctors and have never had an appropriate diagnosis. Um, the only way to truly know if somebody has endometriosis is to do surgery, usually a surgery called a laparoscopy, to go in and look for it. Um, you know, sometimes we see suggestion of it on ultrasound by, you know, maybe seeing endometriosis cysts in the ovaries. And there probably are a lot of patients out there who are told that they have unexplained infertility and really they may also have a component of endometriosis is that we just don't know for sure because they never had surgery because a lot of times we don't want to do surgery to look for it. So, you know, if, if we suspect that somebody has endometriosis, um, you know, a lot of times they can kind of move ahead. In some ways, the idea is to just get them pregnant as quick as possible so you can try to suppress the endometriosis. So as long as they have open fallopian tubes and as long as they don't have any significant ovarian cysts and they can tolerate trying to do medication, sometimes they'll just do Clomid and IUI and see if it works. But many patients who have endometriosis will end up um, doing in vitro fertilization, especially if we think the endometriosis may be affecting the pelvic anatomy or they have a big ovarian cyst or, um, you know, they're kind of at this crossroads where they're thinking about doing IVF or surgery for endometriosis, sometimes those patients will consider doing IVF because it may be that that gives them a higher chance of getting pregnant than doing surgery for endometriosis and is, could be less medically risky just considering the risk of doing a surgery. So sometimes those patients end up doing IVF. You know, what we do with endometriosis patients and IVF it kind of changes over time. You know, much like any other infertility treatment, like anytime we give patients medicine that get their ovaries going, like it also grows the endometriosis. So we have to be really thoughtful about that. And so sometimes patients will go through IVF, they'll have a fresh embryo transfer, and they do fine, and that endometriosis patient can do fine. Um, there are, sometimes people will try to suppress the endometriosis before they do a frozen embryo transfer cycle. So if we really, if we know that someone has endometriosis and they're having a lot of pain or we know from surgery, let's say they have frozen embryos, sometimes they will suppress, like sometimes those patients will maybe be put on birth control pills or be put on something called Lupron or be put on Letrozole to try to suppress all the endometriosis before we do our frozen embryo transfer. There's a couple different things that we sometimes will do with endometriosis patients. Usually we try to avoid surgery if possible, and most of the time we can, um, but you know, sometimes if patients need to have surgery even before they can, they can do IVF. Sometimes our patients with endometriosis, I think, you know, if they know that there's foods that really bother them and cause them to have more pain, um, it's probably causing them to have more inflammation also. So sometimes I've had some um, endometriosis patients feel significantly better by modifying their diet, maybe watching things like gluten and sugar and dairy. And, you know, I figure if they're feeling better, you know, that's probably helping with their inflammation and that probably is not a bad thing. So I think you wanna just be careful um, about kind of the things you're eating, you know, as you're doing infertility treatment.